I really just want the water to like get in there and kind of cleanse the fat and mix a bit. Good morning, beautiful people. All right, a little bit different of a video for you guys today. I am gonna be working on rendering tallow in this video. I have had to shoot this over a couple days because that's how long it's taken, and that's okay, it takes time. But a lot of you asked for a start to finish how to render the tallow. For those who don't know, tallow is the fat that you get from a cow. We had a ton of fat from, <laughs> from our cow or from the beef processing that we did over the last week and a half, however long it's been. Usually from a cow, if you go to a processor and you ask for the fat, you get the small amount that's around the kidneys. And because we were doing this ourselves, we were able to take all of the fat from the entire animal and now we have lots and lots of tallow that I need to render and deal with and so I am gonna go over this in this video with you. I shot this over a couple days and so it's a, a little bounce back and forth and different outfits and stuff but I've put it all in order of how it has been done and I hope it is super super helpful for you guys. One thing I did forget to mention at the very beginning when I started filming was starting with a fine grind or a very small chop. So it, it is a lot easier to render fat when it's already in small pieces. If it's large pieces, it takes a very long time and it doesn't seem to render very well. So I like to start with ground fat. Um, we have a meat grinder, but if you don't have that and you're just working with whatever you have, if you have a food processor, you can kind of whir in that a little bit and get it ground, or you can just chop it really, really fine with a knife. But the smaller pieces, the better to get more of the fat out of it. Um, and rendered down. I had started this project a couple days ago in one of our previous vlogs, so you're gonna see a little bit of rerun here, but like I said, I wanted to put it all together in one video so you guys have a go-to source for how to render beef tallow, and we're just gonna jump right in here. I've got my roaster oven here. I am going to do a method that I saw Ruth Ann Zimmerman on Instagram do. They, she has a YouTube channel as well. I think it's homesteading with the Zimmermans, but she did the tallow thing on Instagram. And the way she did it was she put water in her roaster oven and put her fat in and let it render. And then you just scoop everything out, strain it through some cheesecloth into a pot, put that in the fridge, the fat will rise and solidify at the top. And then you pull that off the next day. And then you basically do it again with water, put the fat back in the roaster oven and let it render again and just kind of it washes basically so she said it helps get that like beefy beefy smell out and you get like a cleaner uh, more pure tallow product out of it which is what i want so i'm gonna do that we're gonna start i've got like two quarts of water in here in the roaster oven i'm gonna load it up with tallow and if I need to add more water then I will and then we'll just do that we'll strain it once it gets all melted and I'll put it in a pot and let it sit in the fridge and solidify or outside tonight because it'll be cold enough <laughs> and let it solidify and then we'll do this again tomorrow with the same batch until probably three times I think I'm gonna do it three times we'll try to see how it is we'll go for three if we need to and see if we can just get a really clean beautiful rendered tallow product if I was doing just cooking lard or cooking tallow, I wouldn't really worry about it as much. Like we don't mind a beefy taste, that's fine. But I do actually wanna make some like face cream and hand cream and maybe some soap out of this. So if it smells less like cow, that'll be nicer <laughs> for a face cream. So I'm gonna get started on this and uh, we'll see how long this takes. Alrighty. Pop the lid on this. I'm gonna set this to 200. I might need to go up, I might need to go down. I'm not sure yet. So we're gonna set it to 200 and we'll just see what happens. All right, real quickly, check on this. This has been going for a couple hours now and it is looking fantastic and it smells amazing. I know some people would be like, oh, how do you deal with the smell of the beef fat? But to me, it smells wonderful. So we're uh, coming along. I think I'll just let it go until about the time that we're done with dinner or going to bed or something and then I'll strain it and we'll get it probably just put outside tonight because it's gonna be cold and we will repeat the process again tomorrow. All 
Alrighty, I am going to be working on the tallow that I started yesterday. So I strained this into the big pot through a cheesecloth to get all the big chunks and everything out and whatever little impurities that would be caught in the cheesecloth. And we put it out in the well house because it's cold in there and <laughs> it, it worked. And um, I didn't have room in my fridge. So today I'm going to take all of this rendered tallow out. And I was hoping to put it in this pot, but I don't think it's big enough. <laughs> so I'm kind of like, all of my pots are being used up right now. So uh, we'll figure it out because I wanted to get more fat going in the roaster, but still also do this batch. So, oh, well, I have a canning pot. I could use that. I will use the canning pot. But I wanted to show you the bottom in here um, with the fat and, and kind of let you see what this looks like. Hopefully you can see it. First, you can see how beautifully creamy this is. Now, because we've used a lot of the, um, the fat from the body rather than just the kidneys, it is a little bit softer, but that's okay. We'll still use it. Um, and then you can see, if we get down here to the bottom, you can kind of see some brown stuff down there. Um, and that's all the impurities that have just kind of fallen to the bottom and, and whatever water's left. And they're, now they're down there. So what I'm going to do is carefully scrape off all this fat from that brown stuff and get it back into a pot again with more water and let it simmer. I don't have to worry about it rendering so much today because there's no more chunks, but we're gonna get it melted and let the water kind of simmer through it and pull out any other impurities and then I will strain it again, do the same thing, let it cool, let the water and junk sink to the bottom and the fat rise to the top and solidify and we'll just repeat that probably today, maybe again tomorrow. Um, we'll see tomorrow if it smells any beefy, <laughs> beefier or if, it, if it's good to go. All right, now the fat's out of the way. You can really see that gelatinous, <laughs> gelatinous stuff there at the bottom. So that was the water that rendered, rendered out and whatever uh, stock I guess it made from the meaty bits. But that'll all go to the chickens. I suppose I could throw that in our beef broth actually. That looks pretty good. But we'll probably send this to the chickens and uh, start over again. this tallow and water to a roaring boil. Let it boil for, y'all can't see, it's steamy. That's right, I think that lens needed to be cleaned anyways. Um, so I let this boil for a little while, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, just enough to kind of like stir it, I guess. And now I'm just gonna let it cool. So it's just gonna hang out here. Because it's in the pot already and it's not in the roaster, I don't have to worry about transferring it. So I'm just gonna let this pot cool off the way it is. We'll put it out in the well house again tonight because it's supposed to be super cold again. And then tomorrow I can scoop it off the top and we'll see how it looks and smells. Alrighty, our tallow has gone through the rendering process, strained, sat overnight. Then I washed it once with the extra water. You know, I pulled all the fat off, put it in with new water, boiled it vigorously, and then let it sit again overnight to cool. And so now we are at one rendering, one washing, and this is where we're at. Already looking very beautiful. I think what's very interesting is this is quite a bit harder than that first time after the rendering. When I rendered it and strained it the first time, the fat was very, very soft the next day. And this is quite a bit harder after just the first washing. And also, it's not smelling quite as beefy. Still has a slight beefy taste, but it's come off a little bit. So um, I think I will do another washing. So we'll pull this fat off, off of here. There's gonna be a layer of water and stuff at the bottom. And because I don't have any more pots right now, I'm gonna have to use the same pot. So we'll pull the fat off. I will wash the pot, get all the gunk, whatever's on the bottom off, and put new water, new fresh water in here, put the fat back in, give it a good boil again, and then I will put it out um, outside because I don't have room in my fridge right now. So it's going outside while it's cold <laughs> um, overnight to solidify, and then we will see how it does in the morning. Yeah, that's 
quite a bit harder. Which is interesting because this was not the kidney fat. This was just the fat from the rest of the body. Um, and the fact that it's hardening up with the washing is very interesting to me. All right, and just like before, I'm just kind of scooping it off the top of whatever water is in there. And this time, as compared to yesterday, it is really just water. It's not gelatinous. It's not full of stuff. Um, it's not brown. It's, it's really just clear water. I'm sure at the very bottom, I'm trying to feel. Uh, I don't even really feel any like graininess or anything. So it's already been cleansed quite a bit. I think one more washing will probably do it. But that's very interesting to me that it's just water on the bottom. So like I said, I'm gonna get this all pulled off and then we'll, we'll wash it again. Okay, I'm actually gonna pull this out with my hands because this time I can't, last time it was too soft. But there's a big old beautiful chunk. Oh, here. You can see a little bit here. I don't know if you can notice this, but it's ever so slightly brown with some impurities. So I'm actually just gonna scrape this off because we're trying to get rid of that stuff. This is part of the cleansing process, so it's less beefy and more pure. And then this last big chunk. There's a little bit on there. All right, I'm gonna put this aside. I'm gonna get this pot cleaned out, and then we will just repeat the same process again one more time. So you can't really see anything going on in there. The water's pretty clear, nothing terribly murky, but we did see that little bit on the bottom. So that was interesting, kind of cool to see how it cleans up and it's not smelling ben, Ben's behind the camera does it smell beefy to you a little bit just tiny bit but, but not as much as yeah not as, in the roaster. not as much as the fresh stuff all right we'll see how another washing does Alrighty, my fat is in the pot, my water, I put about two quarts of water in here, is in the pot. I'm gonna turn this on to medium. Pop the lid, oh, it's already melting. Uh, pop the lid on and let this come to a simmer. And I'm gonna like vigorously simmer it slash boil it for a little bit. I really just want the water to like get in there and kind of cleanse the fat and mix a bit and you know, pull out any rest of the impurities and maybe like grab the beef smell so we'll let it simmer for a little bit but this isn't gonna be like an hours long process like stock it's just remelting it jiggling it with the water a little bit and then we'll just turn it off and let it cool down and then overnight we'll cool it so it can solidify again this has been simmering for I don't know 10 minutes or so so I'm gonna call it good I'm gonna turn it off let it come to room temperature when the temperature drops outside tonight, we'll put it outside and let it cool and solidify. And then we will repeat the process tomorrow with pulling the fat off of the water, scraping any impurities off the bottom. But I won't be washing it again, I don't think. I'll smell it again tomorrow. But I'm pretty sure this is going to be the last one. And um, at that point, we will go over what I do to get the rest of the water out of it to keep it shelf stable. Alrighty guys, we are yet again messing with the tallow. It is another day. So let's recap real quick since it's been a process. We have had day one with the initial render and then once it was all melted, we got it strained and set in a pot to cool from the fat to solidify. That was day one. Day two, we removed the fat from the impurities at the bottom, put it in a new pot with uh, water and washed it, just kind of simmered it for a while to wash, and then let that cool and solidify overnight. Day three, we pulled everything off the fat and repeated the process of the washing, added new fresh water, boiled it for a little while, let it solidify again. So this is day four, and I'm really hoping that at this point, <laughs> we're ready to wrap this up. So we're gonna open this up and see. I mean, it's beautiful. I mean, that color though, you just can't go wrong with grass fed. All right. It is interesting. That's softer than it was yesterday. Beautiful lard. I'm gonna say it still does smell a bit beefy, but not like off-putting. It just smells like it came from an animal. You know, kind of like how lanolin sort of has that smell. I particularly like it. 
So I'm not upset with that. And I think by the time that I mix it with olive oil and maybe some essential oils, you're not gonna notice it in a face cream. I think it's gonna be fine. So I am happy with this personally. I think it would be fine. You could probably, I wanna taste it. It just tastes buttery, actually. Very buttery with a slight meaty flavor, but not in a bad way. I could probably wash this one more time, but I haven't noticed a big change from yesterday to today, so I think it's gonna be fine. So now what I'm gonna do is show you the process of getting this basically to the point of being shelf stable. So because we have washed it with the water, there is water in there. There's water at the bottom. There might still be a little water mixed in with the fat in there. So now what we do is I'm gonna remove the fat from the water again, just like I did yesterday. I'm gonna scrape off any impurities that I see, and then I'm going to put the fat into another pot, a clean pot, a dry pot, and I'm gonna boil this fat. I'm gonna turn it up, I'm not super high, probably medium, and get it to where it's boiling, because any water that is in there is going to boil. Fat itself won't necessarily boil. You'll notice that if you do like a deep frying thing, the fat just sits in the pot and doesn't bubble until you put something in there. So what I'm looking for is for all those bubbles to come out and stop or really, really slow down. And at that point, I know that it's gonna be ready for drying. So let's get this fat from here into the next pot and we'll start that cooking process. All right, so there is a little bit of slightly brown yuck at the bottom. So I'm just gonna scrape that off as I see it. Oh, oh that's a big one. No, that's too big. <laughs> okay, break it half then. Okay. Really aren't too many impurities on this anymore. Not as much as there was yesterday, so I'm really happy with that. Get that down in here so it fits. All right, I'm just gonna let this melt down over medium heat and then we will check back when it starts to bubble and simmer. All right, once this got melted, I actually turned it down to the lowest of low because it was starting to really, really bubble. This isn't really a big enough pot for this, for the amount of uh, tallow that I have in here, but it's the only pot I have available at the moment. So I turned it down, popped a lid on it, it has done a couple big pops from the water coming up from the bottom, but I wanted to show you, you can actually see the water at the bottom, and that's what we're trying to get rid of. All right, so you can see it simmering a little bit, and you can see as it's kind of popping some bigger bubbles every now and then. Every now and then it does a really big pop, which is why I put the lid on. But I don't know if you can see down at the bottom, there are still some like pockets of water, and I'm stirring it every now and then to just kind of help move that water from the bottom to the top. So we're just gonna continue to wait as this simmers and once the water is all gone, then it'll be ready. Alrighty, this is done. You can see there is no more water pooled on the bottom and it just had like a few little teeny tiny bubbles coming out of it. So, oh jeez, that's sun. So I turned it off and I've let it cool for a little bit because I don't want to like, you know, completely melt my containers that I'm about to put them in. I use the Reditainer freezer containers. Reditainer has some like deli ones that are thinner and not quite as awesome as these, but these are the freezer containers. I've been using them for probably over a decade and I love them, they've held up. I don't think I've hardly had any of them break or be destroyed or anything like that. These are the half gallon size. I like to store my fat in these just because we go through a lot of fat with like biscuits and cooking and all that kind of stuff. So. I like these, but you can also get quart and pint size. I think they might even have smaller than that. I will put a link for these down below for you guys so you can find them easily. And then, since this has already been strained and purified and everything from all the boiling we've been doing, this is just ready to go. So I'm just gonna ladle these straight into these containers and then I will let them cool to room temperature and then lid them and mark them with a piece of masking tape and a sharpie that just says tallow, you know, January 2024. And they'll be ready for the freezer. I keep mine in the freezer just because that's super, super long term and I don't have to worry about it going rancid or anything like that. I keep a few in the fridge so that it's like easy to grab when we need it. And then um, I don't really keep it in my pantry, even though you could, just because like pantry space is a premium and it's easier to keep things in the fridge and freezer for super, super long term storage but you could keep it in the pantry. And because we've boiled, we've worked so hard to boil the water out of this, it's gonna last longer in the pantry and you're not gonna have to worry about mold. 
moisture is the enemy of anything really long term <laughs> storage you don't want moisture in it because that's going to breed mold and bacteria and all that kind of stuff over time especially if it's in even a slightly warm environment but since the water's gone you could keep this in your pantry in a cool pantry if yours is cool mine is not um, for a couple months probably you could also store these in mason jars that's totally acceptable i just don't prefer that because these stack better in my freezer and i don't have to worry about jars breaking and that kind of thing but mason jars are totally a doable option if that's how you want to roll with it so i'm going to get this ladled in here and ready for the freezer All right, it is finally finished, a four day saga. But even though it was four days, the actual hands-on time wasn't all that much. So, I mean, it was rendering it in the roaster oven, which was hands-off, and then I strained it, and then boiling it, which was hands-off, and then I strained it, or, you know, put it in the cooler. So it hasn't been a lot of hands-on time, it's just been over four days slowly. But now it is done, there you go. Rendered tallow, start to finish. Um, I hope that kind of alleviated some fears or answered some questions. All in all, a pretty easy process, and I'm very happy with this product, actually. It doesn't taste super beefy. Like I said earlier, it just tastes buttery um, with a slight meat flavor, um, ever so slight, maybe more like a umami flavor rather than just meat. And it's not, it doesn't have a, a super heavy smell. So I would be happy, I think, putting this in a face product or like a cream, which I will be making later. There it is, it is done. I hope you guys enjoyed that and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Lost my train of thought. <laughs> Does this help? <laughs> no, 